Welcome on Drive everyone. I hope you guys have had a, a good night's sleep if you're in the States and wherever you are in the world and very happy to have you. Uh, Brian's on camera with me, Alex is an FC. Unfortunately Mark is uh, not out this afternoon. Um, we weren't able to rectify the problem in the Wendy and um, we're gonna be... Ah, sorry, <laughs> big noise in my ear. Let me just turn that off for a second. Um, so what we did is because we didn't uh, get our full safari dose this morning. Brian and I headed out quite early, so we're quite far from camp already. Um, and we went and we picked up male leopard tracks and they were heading south. Um, the last track's just probably about 100 meters from here. Uh, and it went off the road, it looks like, into the Morwati drainage. So we're going to shoot around, drop into the drainage, check through there. If we get no tracks through there, um, then I'll probably go have a little walk into these thickets over here to see if we can find the leopard. So welcome and let's get going. Afternoon, Andrew, did you get an update? Standing by. Okay, copy. Um, I'm going to keep following up on these tracks uh, that we've got around Twin Dams at the moment. It's, uh, it looks like it's been an adult male. Um, and if I have no luck here, I would like to come join you a bit later. So we'd be guessing that those tracks should come down somewhere around here um, if you carried on on that line. Hmm. No tracks coming into the drainage line. Very interesting. Okay, well we know about a little shortcut road that pops out of the drainage line just up ahead. Let's check a little bit further. No tracks in the drain is fine. I'm going to check these thickets as we drive through very carefully.
last tracks we had were just here. And nothing inside. I'm just going to have a closer look. Everyone, the, the tracks we follow in there. There you can see the leopard tracks. Now we just need to find a leopard attached to his tracks. Lots of a parlor around here, so it was obviously quite a bit earlier in the day. Bachelor group. I'll be back in two ticks. Just gonna have a quick sniff around the bush over here.
well, guys. Can't find the exact spot whoopsie, um, where he seems to go off the road. So I'm still confident he's, he's in the area. So I'm just going to do a, a bit of a wider loop. Maybe go down to our um, southern boundary, check the drainage line there. If not, head back up towards Weaver's Nest. I don't know if you guys all heard those ox peckers. As soon as I got off the car, started alarm calling, letting everyone know that there's a predator walking around. Afternoon, Doug from San Francisco. Uh, Doug would like to know if there are any hazards um, when you get out uh, from the vehicle and you walk around. Uh, yes, namely elephants and buffaloes, lions and leopards. But uh, lion and leopard aren't too much of a hazard uh, during the day. Um, the biggest hazard. Oh, I actually saw his track there. He must have snuck past us. He could have. That's fine. Going straight. Okay. Um, sorry, Doug. Um, the biggest hazard for us is is buffalo. Actually, they are probably the most uh, dangerous animal uh, that for us walking on foot. Those old buffalo bulls. Um, sometimes they're a bit deaf. They don't hear you approaching, and then um, all of a sudden you see them and they see you at the last minute and they can be quite aggressive. I've been chased up a tree a few times by buffalo, um, but generally, as long as you, you're careful and respectful and you, you use all the, your senses, your, your, your eyes, your hearing, your smell, you can smell fresh buffalo dung, you can smell fresh elephant dung. Um, that, that, that keeps you safe. And like with most things, the most important thing is just don't panic. If you panic or run, you're guaranteed to be in trouble. The most important rule in the bush is whatever you do, don't run if you're on foot. You run, you start behaving like prey species, things will chase you. Okay. check um, the side of the road again because it is a busy road the boundary roads access roads to a lot of the properties in this area so it gets driven quite a lot so it's possible the tracks get driven over so, and so I just want to double check very carefully this little section Especially here where there's a, a natural animal path coming out. Okay. Just double double check. Can't be too sure. Also this light makes traffic tracking a little bit difficult. Don't have those nice little shadows to play on the track so you have to just look that extra bit carefully and I mean I already missed a track there so I don't want to miss another one okay 
Stand by Alex, I can't hear you at the moment. The Matimbas uh, located it all this morning. Uh, yeah, copy. I got tracks in the block uh, between Timbans and the Morachi of the um, heading south. Uh, last tracks of that Ingwe head um, south uh, from Twin Dams. There's no tracks coming out from Gowry Main. I'm going to keep checking the area. last track we had was just over here. Possible. Sleeping under one of these bushes. We're just going to pop up around. At Sorry, Alex, you can go now. Missed the track. Um, so, we're going to move out of the area and go see what else we can find. No luck in the block there. I mean, it is possible that those tracks got tired somewhere in Gary Main and I might have missed them. Good luck. One last little dash around. I'm just going to check that main road extra carefully. Such luck. Um, has anyone seen the Nkahumas recently? We got them last night. They said he found more tracks up in Bokum. Did it look like they had eaten? Not last night. No. Not last night, but yeah. When we saw the nest that afternoon. Still hungry. Ish.
Yeah. Yeah, well, enjoy. Which I think. Is next I'm sure it's Kunyama. We had this is quarantine we're following, yeah. Yeah, because we had we had him this morning for most of most of the drive, mm -hmm. um, and we found the tracks coming from Chelepan straight from where we left him this morning. Okay. Anyway, All right. good luck. Good luck, yeah. Spot you later. Cheers. Uh, so I don't know if you guys heard that there was a question about whether the Indians have eaten. Not last night, but I, I'm sure. They have eaten something in the last since the last time we saw them. With a pride that size, if they catch something small like an impala, it's going to be gone in an instant, and they're all going to have some sustenance, but they're definitely not going to look full. One last gasp. Maybe he crossed over the drainage line up to where we found him the other day, onto Leadwood Road. Yeah, I've got that in Konza again. Um, it comes out of the drainage onto Gari Main, um, heading east. Crossed. And then it crosses um, back uh, north into, into the block. Going straight up the road. Well, good spot, Brian. Brian's going to be a tracker soon, guys. There we go. Got his tracks up on the left hand side of the road. So, what happened is it looks like through that dip, there's been a lot of vehicles, and he managed to, his tracks got driven over, but we've got them again now. Uh, still your side? Or is he walking in the middle? Just to prove difficult. Uh, I don't have any tracks. Let's check the app first. Might as well. He's got tracks. Good spot. Now he's got to hope he turns north. smoking hot tracks. They are so fresh. So how we tell that they're so fresh is that the edges are really, really crisp. Um, there's no tracks of like birds or millipedes or, or other animals on top. Except on this road, there's quite a lot of car tracks on top, which does make it quite difficult sometimes. As you go in here, keeps going in. He does it. Keeps going. tracks. Yeah. We'll check up to see the cut line. It's quite often, it seems, that's quite a popular route with the leopards and say, go here and then cut north, preferably, or cut south. Just gonna make sure to check south first. Oh, 
road, yeah. Is that his tracks there? This little link right here of the fire break. We've got Kudu alarm calling, guys. It's so the same place where we had Karula the other day. Uh, hold on. Right. Just trying to get around. Just in. Yeah. Oh, there's a Nyala fighting. That's very usual. Let me just listen again. They came from here. Yeah. Okay, let's just go for it. This is a very bad area. There he is. Boom. Quarantine. Like. Located this Modo de Ingwe, um, very close to the old Nisikai of um, Chilicat Line. It looks like Mr. Q. Not the same tracks we're originally following. This is a looks like uh, the same mail we had this morning. He's mobile at the moment. He's heading um, east in the block. Here we go. Another nice long track. Can't, we can't let them make it too easy for us. Really, really fresh. 
um, by the fact that there was no sort of other animal prints on top of it. Also, there was, there's always a little bit of wind, even on a quite a still day, um, that will rough the edges a little bit, smoothen them almost. Um, and so those tracks were literally crystal, crystal clear. I mean, and also when they're really, when it's when they're really, really fresh, um, when they're really, really fresh, that the dirt's a slightly different colour, just a shade darker. The dirt that's sort of underneath the um, the, the, the top layer of soil. get around ahead of them. Sorry if you hear a few clicks, guys. Just see my camera. That definitely is the quarantine mouth. Don't go that way. Go that way. Yes, that's the right way. Oh, he's such a beautiful animal. Fortunately, we are on our boundary. He is walking across it. Well, we'll stay with them uh, while we can from here. He might change his mind. We've seen him change direction many times before. Oh, spotted by a squirrel.
Congratulations, this animal is crossing east into Torchwood um, on the fire break uh, parallel to Gary Main. Fifty meters. I've still got visual from Cheetah Cut Line at the moment. So as you can see that browsers. So quite interestingly, the, the first warden of the Kruger National Park is quoted to have said, the kudu ranks among our most handsome species. So he was a big fan of, uh, of kudu, and his name was Colonel Stevenson Hamilton, who was the first warden of the Kruger National Park. Okay, well we'll leave them to carry on and we will trundle on our merry way. So it would be very nice if the uh, Inkahuas would grace us with their presence and cross from the north. They weren't found this morning, they were seen last night. I feel like I haven't seen them in an age. Good afternoon, Susan from Arkansas. Welcome on Drive. Um, Susan says I, I've been very lucky in all the, the things I've experienced and places I've been. Um, what is something that I would still like to do or really like to see? Um, well, Susan, very high on my hit list is Bongo. Um, although I lived in, in Gabon, a country which they occur, I was in the coastal forests and they only occur in the inland forests. So I still, I've got to try and get to see Bongo. I'd really like to see them. Um, lots of different bird species. Lots and lots of birds. Um, 
including the Congo peacock that lives in the Congo Basin rainforests. Oh, some more kudu coming up on the right and disappearing into that round leaf teak bowl on top of the termite. So, like the leopards, quite a few animal species like kudu, although not that commonly kudu, will use termite mounds um, as high vantage points as a safety mechanism so they can spot predators and whatnot. So, but there's nothing for the crew to eat on there. She was just going up to check around, make sure everything was safe. So a little youngster with her. Yep. Off into the round leaf teak. Oh, sorry, Susan, back to your question. Um, out of the mammal species, um, then definitely Ethiopia. Uh, for Ethiopian wolf, uh, simian fox, uh, mountain in Yala, uh, what else is really? And then from the bird side in Ethiopia, Prince Raspoli's Taraco, oh, Nifbar, Nightjar, there's so many. Uh, Ethiopia is just, I haven't spent any time up there and I'd really love to go to Ethiopia and spend quite a substantial amount of time there. Oh, sorry, corrugations. I know, although I've seen uh, lowland gorillas, I still haven't seen the mountain gorillas, so I definitely do that if I got the opportunity. forward and then ask Brian to show you the Drakensberg Mountains in the distance. I'm not, a, if my memory serves me correct, it's the longest mountain range in Africa and on average the highest mountain range in Africa. It's not the, doesn't hold the highest mountain, obviously that's the two highest mountains in Africa, uh, Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya. But it's on average the, the highest mountain range in Africa and the longest. Runs all the way from the Eastern Cape and the Sutu, right up to near the Zimbabwe border. There's quite a lot of elephant tracks crossing north. Hopefully it's not that big herd we're looking for.
Good afternoon, Gilly from Wisconsin. Welcome on drive. Let's see. Sorry. Trying to avoid that, that branch, the antenna. Um, Gilly says I've lived in, in so many different countries. Which one do I call her? Just one second. I think I just heard something. Gilly, I'll be back with that question in a, a second. pushback. One of my favorite, favorite animals. Pushback. Out of the antelopes. Um, well, at the moment, Gary, I call um, this part of the low felt of South Africa my home. Um, I actually live not too far from Juma. Probably as the crow flies, 50 miles or so, maybe not even that far. But that's for now, and that could change next week. Who knows? While we grew up, um, my family moved a lot as well, and we never saw moving as a bad thing. We always saw it as an, an exciting thing to a new adventure. And with my family, it generally was a new adventure. I've got a bad feeling all those elephant tracks we saw crossing the road were the big herd from this morning crossing into Buffalo's Hook. Always know when we're coming up to a dam where there's going to be buffalo bulls, we start being mauled by flies. So we need a nice big cold snap to get rid of them. They are a very minor irritation and easy to put up with just for being able to do what we do. Oh, it is rearranging our roads again. I'm just gonna try and move it off the road a little bit quickly. today. I don't normally see this many kudu. This is our fourth different sighting. What is that back there? No. False enough. No buffaloes. No wonder the flies are after us. Oh no, they are. Just didn't see him there. Poor guy, all by himself. He must be bearing the brunt of the flies at the moment. Just gonna move around so he can see him. There 
there he is. Learn Buffalo Bull. At Buffalo's Hook Dam. Well, quite an aptly named spot. Buffalo's Hook, basically translated from Afrikaans to English, means Buffalo Corner. So, there was a question asked earlier on Drive about dangers of walking and these old buffalo bulls are the biggest danger of walking. It can be quite cantankerous. From a vehicle they're completely fine on foot and that's because they do recognize man as a predator. We have been the dominant diurnal predator for the last 150 to 200,000 years and there have been bipedal predators on African savannas for the last half a million to a million years. Oh, I, actually I lie, longer, two million years, bipedal predators. But actively sort of capable of hunting an animal like a buffalo, probably the last half a million years. In the old Zulu, um, Probably what's happening is all those tracks of the big herd we saw crossing, they're going to be trying to follow and catch up after they've had a drink. Might have just got separated for a short while while they're, while they're feeding. They're probably, I think they're going to walk towards us when they finish drinking. So when they come past us, she might shake her head at us or lift her head. And all she's doing is just reminding us that she's a big animal and we shouldn't take any chances annoying her. There we go, you can see the head almost immediately lift.
reminding us that she's big and strong and we mustn't cause any trouble with her and her babies. And because we stayed still and kept calm and didn't react badly, she would just continue on. Okay. I'm sure quite a lot of you wonder how to age elephants. So we'll have a quick look in my what the J. Crown called the Mammal Bible. Uh, where is it? There we go. If you have a look in the bottom right corner. So at the top A, adult female. So that would be 20 and above years. B is probably a sub of around 15 years. C, six years old. D, around two years old. And then when they're still around the height of the mom's belly um, and below, they will be below a year or an infant. It's a very basic way of aging, um, but it's what a lot of people use as their general aging for elephants. Look back. Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, long legs. Sometimes a problem in these cars. <laughs> only Brian and I at uh, Wild Earth seem to have that problem. We're the only two long people. Leopard trucks head straight down this big path there, so I'll go around and check Nyala Road and the drainage systems. Okay. Cheers, right. good luck. Thank you. Oh, that was a nice little elephant interlude. That's wonderful animals. And if you, you know how to read their behavior and you respect them, there's no need to be too scared of them. The problem is a lot of people get scared, react, make noise, rev their car, stuff like that. And that's all aggressive sounds to an elephant. Or to any animal. I mean, revving a car is a very aggressive sound. So it causes them to either run away or behave ag aggressively, obviously neither of which we want, because we want to watch them. Sandy from Georgia. Welcome on drive with us this afternoon. Sandy would like to know whether elephants have one set of tusks throughout their life or do the little babies lose a set of tusks and then a more permanent set comes through later. Sandy, they only have one set of tusks throughout their life. So the tusks will grow continuously to up until their death. Um, they do, however, have six sets of teeth. And when they get to the last set of teeth, which is between the ages of around 50 and 60 years old, um, they generally will die because they start lacking condition. They're not able to um, crunch up the vegetable matter they're eating. Um, and that's generally how an elephant uh, moves on, is uh, from, more, never normally from starvation before it gets to that stage. Uh, quite often they'll just be too weak and they'll uh, fall in the water and drown is a quite a common one. Or one of the predators will find them in that weakened state. 
or stuck in the mud is another common one. And then drowning again. I'm just going to have a very quick look down in this drainage line uh, to see if that other set of male left tracks we found up there come out. Um, I, I'm not going to spend too much time because we already have seen a leopard um, this evening, but I can't help myself. I have to check. Um, it also helps for tomorrow morning um, if we don't have anything, um, knowing the general direction of um, where the animals are going. Yeah, I'll be back in two ticks. I'm just going to check up in this drainage line here. Drainage lines at this time of the day are always a bit fun because the buffalo like to hang around them. <laughs> But I'm not going to be gone for long and I won't go too far.
Well, no tracks, guys, but it's always worth just having a look. Even if we don't find, I know what his general direction is if we, if we need to start looking tomorrow morning again. One of my favorite roads on Juma, both in Yala Road North and South. And this little drainage system has been very productive since I, for me since I've been here. This is where we found, um, a bit further down, is where we found Kujuma with that pushback kill, and we've seen. And then we also tracked and we found and we followed quarantine into the same same trend line. It's a good leopard spot. So those tracks of that, those elephants we saw crossing our northern boundary, it's definitely that big, big herd from this morning. You can see all their tracks coming up here. And I think those three we saw there were definitely stragglers from that larger group. Toronto. Mike is asking, is this live? Yes, Mike, uh, by a few seconds. Um, you are live with us on safari in Juma Private Game Reserve in the Sabi Sands Game Reserve in South Africa. Um, it is part of an open system of about 2.7 million hectares, which is my hectare to acre is terrible, but just generally double. So for uh, over 5 million acres um, of unfenced wilderness, obviously there's different pieces within that and we were in the, uh, probably or just below the center and right in the west of that large wilderness area. The Sabi Sands Game Reserve is one of the oldest um, private game reserves in terms of the fact that it's been doing uh, safari tourism um, in, in, in South Africa. Oops.
Good evening, Billy from Florida. Billy would like to know why that small elephant we just saw at Truffles Hook Dam only had a single tusk. Uh, more than likely, it, it broke it feeding. Um, so, like people, uh, elephants are left or right tusked rather than left or right handed, and they do break them quite regularly while feeding. Or it was uh, the slightly bigger one was a young male. He could have also broken it, um, sparring or play fighting with another young male. Pretty sure, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure about that. Oh, good evening, Raisa and Fitlin. Um, Raisa is staying in, in Finnish, it's called a, a red gazelle because it belongs to the ag. That's going to wait. Get my, my tongue. Oh, we've got some more buffalo bulls. Well, we'll stop next to the buffalo bulls and I'll get out the mammal bible. But um, even though they might be called a red gazelle, they are not actually a gazelle. They might belong to the same um, family. They all belong to the, the sub-family Bovididae, but Get it out for you. So, Teresa, to answer your question there, or clarify, they are all under the order Artiodactyle, tyler, sorry, which is even toed agulates, which also includes pigs and hippos and giraffe, deer, um, and bovididae, which is most antelopes. And under bovididae, so antelopes, uh, bovididae, will under them fall wildebeest, hartebeest, bornbok, blessbok, sesame, dikers, springbok, kipspringer, diktuk, arabi, stenbok, kreisbok, suni. So they are not a true gazelle even though they fall under one of the subfamilies. Even a springbok is not a true gazelle, so it's the closest thing to a gazelle we have in southern Africa. Good evening, Geraldine from the UK. Geraldine says, when we see bush pack, it's generally by themselves. Um, or is this not true and they live in a group um, and we just don't see the other individuals? And what is their social structure? Their social structure is uh, very similar to Inyala and Kudu. Uh, there will be multiple females that will share a, a same home range. But, oh, sorry, my head's in the way. Um, they're not always all together but there will be a couple of bushbuck females within the area and often you can see up to three or four uh, of, of them together but generally they are, are more solitary than say in Yala or Kudu um, and basically like in Yala and Kudu the males are completely non-territorial unless there's a female in estrus then they will fight for mating rights He's been having a nice mud bath.
feel the flies buzzing around him. Sorry guys, I realise I've just made a, a boo-boo um, and a lot of you on Twitter and out on email are right that elephants lose their first set of baby tusks at about a year old um, and they are literally four centimetres so they're actually barely, barely, barely visible. Um, so, and the second set uh, of tusks that um, grow from about a year old will continue to grow through the rest of their life. I apologize for that. Thank you for making, keeping me honest, guys. Sandy from Virginia. Sandy would like to know what is the name of the book I was looking at. Um, Sandy, the book is called Smithers. It's written by a guy called Smithers. It's called Mammals of the... Wait, let me just double check the name for you there, Kiki. Uh, the Mammals of the Southern African Subregion. Uh, it's unfortunately no longer in print. It was produced by the University of Pretoria. It's got one of the most um, renowned, world-renowned um, zoology departments. Um, and it was produced by the head of the zoology uh, department a few years ago. As far as I know, they haven't released another one. I think the last printing of the book was in the, in the late 80s. And it is a very difficult book to get your hands on. on that position of um, Gary Kappa. Uh, what is the vehicle lineup in that position? Copy that. So I'm not 100% sure where that position was, so just let me know when you get my audio, please. Thank you very much, Jan. Copy that. Good evening, Larry from Indiana. Oh, let me just pick that up for day. would like to know when do elephants, young elephant bulls stop sort of play fighting and um, start fighting for real uh, and what would be the cause of that? Uh, that would generally be when they get um, older and start experiencing must and start competing for females. Um, so they can have sort of serious fights from probably around 20. Um, but only really serious fights from about 25 when they start competing for mating rights with the older, older, older animals. Um, just pick this up off the road. Um, Southern Porcupine. It's the largest rodent in Africa. Um, and un un unlike popular myth, uh, porcupine 
not shoot their calls out at, well, our porcupines don't shoot their calls out at uh, would be predators. It's just a very effective defense strategy. Although they do get eaten by lion and leopard and hyena from time to time. Also make very, very good fishing floats. So, I think I have a little surprise for everyone. I couldn't help it. I've known about it all afternoon, but it's the right time of day to get there. I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet. Uh, I'm going to keep you in suspense for a little while longer. Oh, lovely sky. message from Syl, who is uh, from the Lions of the Sabi Sand. She said she was chatting to a friend of mine, uh, Grant Beverly, who's in charge of the Endangered Wildlife Trust uh, wild dog project in this area. Um, and he says, apparently the wild dogs are very close to Juma, which is very good news, so I will get hold of them as soon as I get home to find out exactly where close to Juma. Uh, but uh, that is not the surprise, Syl, but very good guess. I know I didn't know about that. I just bought some popcorn. Oh, sorry, apparently this, uh, I didn't know about this, but in, in December, Hayden and Peter were using a quill, a magic quill to find cats. Um, maybe I should give them my popcorn recipe. <laughs> uh, no, I just saw it on the road and I, I, I just dropped down to pick it up. I haven't been carrying it with me. Um, but it did remind me of another interesting story. Uh, in Zulu folklore, um, the black rhino, because he spent so much time bashing around in the, in the thickets, he, he tore a big hole in the side of his body. Um, and he didn't know what to do, because he kept getting flies and stuff in it. So he went to chat to the porcupine, and he asked the porcupine if he could borrow his quill to stitch up the hole and he did a very good job and he finished stitching the hole and then he put it in his mouth and he he was carrying the quill to return it to porcupine and what happened is he tripped and he <coughs> swallowed the quill and a black rhino's dung is always spread they kick it out unlike a white rhino and the Zulu, Zulu myth is that he's always looking 
for porcupine's quill to return it. Oh, we've arrived at the surprise. At the perfect time of day. What could it be? Dum -da -lum -dum. Dum -da -lum -dum. I've arrived at the surprise and it's the perfect time of the day it's our very good friend Mr. Snidey Face so let's see who can with what I said and looking at him, let's see who gets which leopard this is. Remember, send your answers to questions at wildearth.tv or use the hashtag Twitter or on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. See who, who of you out there can identify which leopard this is. Two stations or Kari Kapan. I think everyone got it right. I think my Mr. Snarly Face comment gave it away. But very interestingly, this morning, while I originally thought quarantine was Kunuma, he came out of the same drainage line that we left um, Kunuma in last night. And so until we sort of were able to spend a bit more time with him and figure out that it wasn't, um, wasn't Kunuma. Um, so they were obviously might have even been t together or very close to each other last night. Oh, but we've arrived at the right time. Doesn't look like he's fed on anything since last night. So I'm hoping within the next 15 to 20 minutes, he's going to get moving again. We're very, very close to so hopefully he gets moving. Um, he's quite close to camp. Chat its skills. But they wouldn't uh, have a cooperative hunt, no. Uh, they wouldn't do a cooperative hunt together. Rodent um, species if there's bats. Every different letter of leopards is different. We can't have a set for. And your day. There's a very good chance of him starting to move.
fun. That was the plan, and if you have any other ideas. Good evening, Joan from Connecticut Morning Drive. Joan would like to know. Ah. Are loners or they will will, will they rejoin the herd? Uh, there's a possibility they might rejoin the herd, but it's unlikely. They are herd a the herd, and um, they're not able to compete with the younger. Bulls. So generally they will not rejoin breeding herds, although you sometimes join Now Alex just keep sending through questions maybe till he keeps till he moves. Good evening, Kay. Uh, from North Carolina. Uh, Kay is asking if there's been any word on the hyena dens. Um, 
I'm pretty sure they're still there. We just um, haven't got around to that side of the property for a, uh, for a couple of drives. But I'm sure uh, someone will check the, the hyena dens tomorrow. There we go, he's starting to do a bit of cleaning, which is quite often a good uh, good chance he might move quite shortly. Or not, just to prove me wrong. Good evening, Jill um, from the UK. Jill would like to know, at what age do elephants stop growing? Um, generally between um, 20 and 25, Jill, is when elephants stop growing. So the reason we, we're sitting here very patiently, even though that it's not a very good sighting of a leopard, and I know you guys who follow often um, have seen fantastic sightings of leopard, much better than this. Um, the reason is that he is quite hungry, um, and there's a very strong possibility that he, he might hunt shortly. Uh, when is up to him. Obviously we have zero control on when that happens. But it's the right time of the day, we're in the right place, um, and there are prey species around. And it, we're not the only one, there's, there's two other vehicles who have also been sitting here waiting patiently, quietly in the dark, waiting for him to get up and start moving. So this is the ideal time um, for any question um, that you've wanted to ask. Obviously we will, can't get to all of them, but we will try to get through as many as possible. This is a great, great uh, situation for you guys to ask questions while we are waiting um, next to an animal like this. So please send your questions through to questions at wildearth.tv or just use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter.
Good evening, Rita. In Texas, Rita would just like us to, um, to mention the differences between quarantine and and Konyuma. Again, the ones that Brian and I were discussing earlier. Um, <coughs> sorry, Brian's noticed that on quarantine's back, there's a, a very distinct uh, sort of runway, it's a straight line of perfect rosettes parallel to each other just above his tail. Um, his his colour as well is is a lighter colour, um, sort of more similar to, to Karula's colour. Um, and then he's got a slightly bigger neck and it's very difficult unless you see the tracks next to each other and they make them. I think his tracks are slightly bigger. His, his paws are slightly bigger, but that, that is, that's just a, uh, I can't prove it unless I actually have them walking next to each other and get to see both sets of tracks. Um, for me, one of the most identifying um, aspects of Konyuma is the color as well. He's got a more sort of golden, a richer color, more similar to Mvula. Um, and also above his right eye, he's got a very distinct sort of double spot. But I don't know, for some reason I noticed that, that spot particularly. Um, and then the main difference is just their reaction to the vehicles. Um, although, this, since we've been here, Kunuma hasn't really reacted at all. But normally he's, he's got a bit more attitude, he snarls at the vehicle sometimes, he, he'll run up to a vehicle. Um, he just seems to be a little bit more playful, for lack of a better word. Where this quarantine is just very relaxed, walks right up to the vehicles, walks past the vehicles. Where there's, uh, Kunuma can be, uh, sometimes he likes to jump around. I mean, a couple of drives ago, he, he literally, from a sitting still position, leapt like a bounding kitten and stopped less than a meter away from my door and he came from about 25 30 meters and for no reason um he's just got a, a very interesting character and that's actually why um i think uh, he's my favorite leopard of, of the ones we see here and also he's the first leopard i found on foot so <laughs> uh well at at, at juma Got a little bit of movement there. A bit more preening and cleaning. Uh, nothing further, just three stations off um, Gary Cut Line. He doesn't seem to be being very uh, cooperative this evening. Well, we've been so spoilt with leopards recently. Um, I think we're going to see if we can find something a little bit different to interesting in the last in the last 20 minutes um if he's this flat now i, I really don't think he's going to get mobile in the next 20 
20 minutes. So we, we're going to go go look at something a bit different. Try find some of the other more interesting little nocturnal species. Leaving two stations off Gai Kaplan. Which one's brighter? That one. There we go. We've got, we got dual spotlight system tonight. So we've got Brian and myself on spotlight due to the fact that we've only got one vehicle out. They keep your lies on your side of the road. No, I'm joking. Sure, guys, where are all your questions? Is everyone already in weekend mode? It might get dark enough that we can see a constellation or two just now. Oh, more buffalo. Confirm Jim. Jim. Oh, where are you going, Mr. Dugger Boy? Uh, evening Jim from Texas Jin ah Jin sorry uh, Jin from Texas welcome uh, with us this evening Jin would like to know whether I've ever seen a black leopard I have once when I was about eight or nine years old um, with my mom and my little brother and two other kids and my mom was busy taking us uh, into the town of Rifue in northern Zululand and I don't know, and, the, and, and, a, and a black leopard shot across the road in front of us. Um, the only other black leopard images I've seen are on camera traps from the rainforest but there is the only black leopard I've seen with my own two eyes. I'd love to see another one. Good evening, Chris from California. Chris would like to know 
if a leopard or lion has ever used my vehicle as a distraction for hunting. Uh, yes, inadvertently a couple of times um, in the Sabi Sands. Uh, leopards and lions in this area are quite well known for doing that. that kills them. Um, if you guys remind me tomorrow, it's a bit dark now, um, I will show you uh, a picture of a lion, uh, a lion and leopards. Actually, I think we've got, we can use a light, huh? We should, let's just get, a, let me just get a little bit away from the dam, uh, away from the bugs, so we don't get swamped. Um, but I'll explain anyway while we're going. So basically, um, there's a gap between the, the lions, canines and their incisors. Uh, and so basically the canines act as an anchor on the animal's throat and that gap actually pinches the windpipe perfectly closed to suffocate them. So it's not the teeth that are doing the damage, it's that that, that gap between the teeth is, is, is so specific for pinching a windpipe of an animal uh, to suffocate them. Um, on smaller stuff, a lot of animals will just use a bite to the head using their canines to go straight into the brain. So like with Dyker or Young Impala, things like that. I'll generally go for a, a skull bite rather than a, than a suffocation hold. Uh, and then lions on buffalo, quite often they will use the nose, a nose hold. So they'll bite through the front of the, the buffalo's nose uh, and literally uh, that causes it uh, to pretty much drown. The, the blood, it bleeds into the, the nasal cavity and when the buffalo tries to bleed it, it, it takes uh, blood into its lungs but it's a very slow process that one. And quite often with um, buffalo there can be multiple, there can be a, a nose hold and be a throat hold. Although the problem with something as big as a buffalo um, that, that suffocation hold isn't that effective as it would be on something like a kudu, for example. Good evening, Joyce and Carson. Hi, Carson. I hope you're having a good time on the drive with us this evening. Um, Carson is six years old, and he would like to know where we are going now and what we are looking for. Well, Carson, uh, because the leopard was sleeping, we're going around trying to see if we can find some other interesting nocturnal animals, like bush babies, genets, and civets. Um, so we're working our way around the edge of a big clearing called Quarantine Clearing, which is just a big open area. Um, and we're working on the edge where the thicker area is to see if we can find some small and more interesting uh, nocturnal mammals. And Carson, if you don't know what nocturnal means, it means animals that come out in the night time. So we're looking for nighttime animals with the, the spotlights. Yeah, I think we should be far enough away from the bugs to have a look at, have a look at the picture of how a, a predator a predator a predator uh, predator's teeth work or specifically the cats. You can see on a leopard skull here, that little gap 
there, and there. So basically what happens is, between the incisors and the canines, when the leopard grabs onto a throat, which is like that, they use those canines, sink in an anchor, and then that little gap pushes the, the esophagus closed, like that, to stop them breathing. It might be a little bit more prominent on the lion just because the skull's bigger. Let me see what the picture's like on the lion. Um, where does the lion skull? There we are. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit more visible on the lion just because it's a bit bigger. See that gap there? Okay, there was one other thing I wanted to show you quickly. Where's it gone? Alright, I wanted to show you a hyena skull. Uh, so that's to show that the, they don't really use, use that method. Um, they're more. Uh, there we go, that's a brown hyena, but it doesn't matter, any of the hyena skulls. You can see how the, the gamp's not as prominent, and also the canines are not as sharp. And you see they don't have those bigger incisors there to help close the gap. So you can see a hyena's a, a grabber and a puller rather than a, a suffocator, it's sort of just a warrior rather. Okay. Well, oh, let me just reposition. It's, I think it's dark enough just get ourselves facing away from the west and the ambient light left by the sun. see the stars in into my eyes. I'm just going to turn off all our lights for a second just so I can get my bearings. What is that? Oh, I'm flicking the wrong switches. Okay, let's have a quick look what we can see. It's going to be easy to explain. There's just a little bit too much ambient light there. Which are you on the Southern Cross? Yeah. See, unfortunately, the pointers are under a patch of cloud. Yeah. So that's, that's the Southern Cross. Um, the two pointers that point to the Southern Cross are actually, unfortunately, behind a cloud at the moment. But those two pointers are called Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri. And Alpha Centauri is actually a binary system. It's two stars. And the closest star to our solar system, apart from the Sun, obviously, which is our closest, um, is part of Alpha Centauri, and that is called Alpha Proximus, obviously, for proximity. Um, let's try have a look. Uh, you can see on the ecliptic, it's low. right there. What have we got that side? We've got Orion. Uh, do you want me to move the car? I'm trying to see Pleiades, it's still a bit early for Pleiades. We've got the false cross as well. Okay, just give Brian a second. Yeah, we're going to have to move the tiny bit. Okay. So we can see a lot more, st a lot more stars here. So when? There we go. We can see a lot more stars in the southern hemisphere than in the northern hemisphere. So those three stars you can, that are very visible there, um, that's part of Orion's belt. And if you go over there, Let's just watch that there. There's that little, those other 
a little bit more, I think. I can't go higher than that. Oh, you can't, so... Okay, uh, so that's Orion's belt. Off to the left-hand side of screen is the sword. It's actually a very big constellation, takes up quite a lot of the sky. Um, during the summer months, Orion is going to be our most common constellation that's seen. But coming through now, April, May, we'll start seeing Scorpio, which is a really magnificent one to have a look at. Quite easy to see um, in comparison and quite easy to actually make out what it is. On that st star that Brian has zoomed in on now, um, if you, you do see Orion in the, in the Northern Hemisphere, if you have a telescope at home or even a pair of binoculars, have a look. Um, you can actually, actually see a, a, what, a, a Nova, I think it's called. Um, rusty. Um, and it's called Betelgeuse, which is off there. And it's, if you've got a telescope, I mean, the colors are incredible. Pinks and purples and greens and... We can do one more, just in case you guys ever really do get lost out here in the African bush. Uh, might have to move again. Unfortunately, we only really see three constellations at this time of the year. Um, oh, what was that? Bat flying over my head. So we had a look at the, su the Southern Cross that can help you find south if you use it with the pointers. Um, and if you look up there, the False Cross, it's much bigger um, and all the stars are sort of the same brightness. Whereas in the Southern Cross, the three lower stars are, are, are much brighter than, than, the, than the top star. So that's the False Cross. And it's actually just above the Southern Cross in the sky. But if you had to use that to find south, oh, actually you would end up going west. Now the big difference, tell, tell the difference apart from the size of them, is the two pointers, which we unfortunately are behind clouds tonight. But on that note, guys, I think it's time for us to love you and leave you. Um, Thank you very much for, for joining us this evening. It's been a, a, a great afternoon. I had a, a wonderful time. I hope you guys did as well. Um, and please join us again tomorrow morning. So from Brian and myself out here in the, on the vehicle and Alex who is an FC, um, thanks very much and have a great day or m morning or evening wherever you might be in the world. And we will see you tomorrow. Cheers.